Well, hello and welcome to not only the Thursday edition of the DC Today, but it is the close of August. So we have uh, one more day left in the week tomorrow, but that is the first day of September as we get ready to go into the Labor Day weekend. So I am back here in the Newport office for about a week. I'll be back in New York City uh, middle or late part of next week. Uh, I, to make a very long story short, this uh, trip and aspiration for uh, unplugged time away was uh, taken out by Hurricane Franklin, which has kind of ravaged uh, Bermuda. It's a different hurricane than the one that is now uh, hitting Florida. So rough times down there in that uh, part of the world with, with hurricane season. So people have much bigger problems than than us having a trip canceled. But it all kind of worked out. Grateful to Brian Seitel, filled in great, doing the DCD last, DC Today last couple of days. And um, I, I think that really the story of the market for August is an interesting one because you've had markets rally over the, this last week. Today is a little bit of an exception, I'll explain in a moment. But you um, really had a, a downward pressure on markets throughout the month, and it doesn't actually end up looking that bad as the calendar month goes just because of this late month rally. The um, things I guess I want to share before I go into the numbers are Fed governor, he's the Atlanta president, Atlanta Fed president, Rafael Bostic. Um, I believe he's out of the country when he made this speech, but I read the transcript this morning and it was by far the most dovish and, and it seems to me the first kind of real explicit permission structure from a Fed governor. And these guys have been using the media to do forward guidance for a long time um, and, and throughout this whole kind of tightening period. And Bostic said, you know, we risk over tightening now and we really need to allow these higher rates to play out and see the impact it has. And I think that that is um, as explicit of uh, a ruling as you'll see a month before an FOMC meeting about their intention to not act. Now, the futures are up to 88% now, uh, saying that they're not going to raise rates next month. And I think it's 54%. Um, and I looked at that about 4 o'clock this morning. So if it's updated since, I, I just happen to have not looked at it in the last, you know, 12 hours or whatever it is. But 54% uh, that they won't raise at the November meeting. So let's just boil that down. Pretty much right now with a month to go, markets are saying they're not going to be a rate hike at the uh, late September FOMC meeting. And then a month later, it's a jump ball. It's about 50-50. That, sound, that sounds all right. Um, in, in terms of the issues with the Dow, the market, the Dow got up about 200 points. NASDAQ was up quite a bit. S&P was up. And then it reversed over 350 points intraday. And just kind of after making a high of the day, you know, an hour, hour and a half into trading, just slowly but surely fell throughout the rest of the day. And I just want to be clear, one particular name was down 3.5%, a big health insurer. And, and so that, that accounted... Uh, let's see, on a percentage basis, the Dow was down half a percent. That accounted for almost all of that attribution in the Dow. And then the S&P was just down 16 basis points. The NASDAQ was up 11 basis points. So you kind of, apart from this one Dow name, basically ended up with flat, flat performance in, in all the market indices. And yet, what's interesting is that all the defensives were down. Healthcare was down over 1%, but you were down with utilities, uh, down with real estate, down with consumer staples. And then consumer discretionary and technology were both up, and as was energy. So some of the, the more high beta and some of the kind of more cyclical sectors were higher, but it was an odd day to close out the month, no doubt. Oil was up 2.4% on the day, closing at 83.58 a barrel. I believe that is the high level we've seen this year. Ten-year Treasury uh, closed at 4.1%, so you had a tough month for bonds as yields moved a lot higher. Ten years, definitely 20 basis points off of the high it had hit, so Treasuries have done a lot better in the final week, but again, still up 30-something basis points uh, from where they had been earlier, okay, about late July, let's say. 
On the economic front, personal income was up 0.2% on the month, uh, and it had been expected to be up 0.3%. This is about a one-month lag from getting the July data. Initial jobless claims came in a little bit better than expected, 228,000 for the week, 235 have been expected. The number I think is more meaningful in a longer term basis is the savings rate was down to 3.5%. And it would be, it had been about 4.2, I think, the month prior. This 3.5 is the lowest in 10 months, okay? Um, but it's, it's down about almost 50% from its 20-year average, which was 6%. And that 20-year average of 6% was itself quite a move down from what, what we're used to and what I think is a healthier societal savings rate. So I, I don't know how to spin that one. I, I think we'll have to wait and see if this 3.5 holds or if it moves back into the 4s. There could be some lumpiness around it. I know people make arguments about it doesn't reflect the equity in people's homes and some of the 401k stuff, but I don't care. That's been baked in for 20, 30 years. It still gives you a general idea of what amount of people's paychecks they need to live. And at 3.5% savings, you do seem to me to have an undersaved society. Uh, but we'll get more data as things go. Um, there is an Ask David in the D.C. today explaining why nominal GDP growth matters as we go forward and what the challenges have been in getting real GDP growth when we've had such low inflation for 15, 20 years until the last couple of years and the reason being nominal GDP growth was so low, what that means going forward. This, this delta uh, between nominal and real that is inflation, the distinction between the two and what it means to real economic prosperity is important, and I think I think I answered uh, in a clear manner in the DC Today today. So I'll let you look at that, and then tomorrow's Dividend Cafe is entirely devoted to different questions people had on all sorts of different topics. So I'm really looking forward to presenting that to you tomorrow as well. In the meantime, uh, there won't be a DC Today until Tuesday because of the Labor Day holiday, but the Tuesday edition will be the Monday format, long form, and I'm looking forward to uh, being back with you in the D.C. today on Tuesday next week, live here from Newport. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reading the D.C. today. Mm -hmm.